And welcome back to the Nasty Metal Box channel here at YouTube. Of course, I'm feeling better. Welcome to the very first episode to kick off Thrash Metal Month. Um, now, I was really thinking on what would be, you know, the first episode. What would be the topic? So, but instead, I think for this whole, uh, I think for the first week of this month, it's definitely going to be focusing a lot on uh, discussion videos, while next week we'll definitely get into some reviews. So, for this first episode, while well, it's definitely, uh, you know, I'm not getting into any meat or anything of this whole month, because I know everyone will want, want to see all the meat, all the stuff, all the obscure shit, but I decide to kick off the month, I have to do something a little different. Let's definitely go into the roots of thrash metal, of course. Um, now, the, it, it's not really going to be a whole lot of obscure stuff, but I just decided to do it anyways. And of course, uh, for the roots of thrash metal, which will be uh, separated into two videos, here it's all going to be on the 70s. Now, here's the now the, pretty much the 70s. Well, it's Basically, this was probably the uh, one where mostly a lot of hard rock bands are very much experimenting with heavier sounds. Even, of course, experimenting with even faster arrangements, which really led to the, the real beginnings of creating the whole genre that is now cons known as thrash metal. And it all, of course, starts off with, you know, within the first, you know, in 1970, whatever. Uh, so it's a, but I decided to also show up, you know, some albums here that uh, I definitely do kind of uh, deserve to be brought up and when, you know, talking about the roots of it. So definitely, uh, you know, get right in. Of course, uh, this first band I'm going to be showing. Um, now, technically, this band is not really that metal. Of course, it's very argued if they're not, even though the band doesn't really consider themselves metal, and there is definitely a whole lot of truth to it. But, this band definitely, I think, did really much help, kind of, you know, shape, uh, or even influence the genre, and that's ACDC, and of course I'm showing the, the Let That Be Rock album. Of course it has to be with the song Let That Be Rock. Um, ACDC were definitely a band that did, during the 70s, really experiment with, with some fast, you know, riffing, whatever, but to me, I think the most, the song that really, you know, really kind of has a bit of that real chugging sort of riffing has to be the song Let That Be Rock. Um, for 1977, this was probably one of the, the probably at that time, why one of the fastest or most aggressive songs uh, probably next to Motorhead in a way. It was just uh, was loud, heavy, and just very obnoxious and, uh, which is what I think really characterized you know, a genre that is thrash metal. It really characterized the whole entire thing on what it was. It was just fast to break and just just real you know, full of balls. So, yeah, definitely one I do that surprisingly seems to get left out uh, when talking about the roots of thrash, because people don't, don't want, want to get a whole lot of, oh, they were never metal, or some type of, you know, shit, but the thing is, you can't count out a track such as Let There Be Rock by ACDC. It really was a fast song for 1977. And it even was also covered by a few thrash bands as well. Onslaught also covered it. So that definitely says quite a bit. 
course, uh, next band up here. Um, and of course, this guitar player. Um, you know, th this guitar player right here, well, definitely, you know, really, uh, uh, you know, experimented a lot with very fast stuff, and of course, you can't help but talk about Ted Nugent. <laughs> you can't. Um, really, uh, of course, the first time here, you know, with uh, Motor City Madman. Uh, th th this guy very much also, just like, you know, with uh, ACDC, whatever, really experimented with a lot of fast, fast stuff here. Um, yeah, you can't really help but uh, bring up this guy. Um, of course, another one here, uh, you know, Aerosmith, Rats in the Cellar. Of course, uh, this was also pretty influential, you know, stuff to uh, guys such as Dave Mustaine and uh, James Hetfield. So, that definitely says quite a bit. I know I'm probably uh, being very a bit uh, sloppy with, with uh, some of this stuff, but you know what? I'm just, uh, you know, talking about stuff that is, you know, that's been, you know, very influential and definitely shows the roots within it. Um, um, of course, I'm just building up from uh, stuff uh, that is, that can be, you know, seen as, you know, obscure or uh, building up stuff that, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Alright, so, uh, Riot. Another band that definitely also really helped, uh, you know, influence such a genre. Of course, with this album right here and uh, Narita, you can't also help but bring up these guys. Uh, Warrior, uh, definitely one. Uh, Desperation, just yeah. Uh, definitely some really. Uh, Mark Reilly def was definitely one who really, you know. Showed a lot of heavy riffing as well on some of these. Uh, of course, I got the sound. It's just good, heavy for 1977. But since this is the roots of thrash, I definitely can't help but uh, uh, see these guys as also an influence on thrash metal. Um, here, um, Narita, the song itself, and uh, even uh, part of the song Road Racing. Both were pretty damn uh, kind of fast for that time as well. Of course, it was released in 1979, right? You know, kind of heading into the 80s. But this really was a pretty much an influence on thrash as well, and of course, maybe even the whole new wave of British heavy metal movement. But it led to, to that. Um, of course, another one you can't help but bring up is a Queen with, uh, you know. Uh, sheer Heart Attack. No, no, not this. Of course, the song that uh, Fee knew was on News of the World was also pretty kind of fast, kind of punkish almost, if you think about it. But the song Stone Cold Crazy was also for, again, like 1974. Pretty heavy, pretty fast as well. Definitely one track that definitely, you know, really helped, you know, shape up such a sound. Uh, of course, uh, can help also bring up Budgie, definitely a first wave of British, you know, hard, heavy band. Of course, they asked me with the song uh, Bread Fan, which of course was a huge influence also on the new wave of British heavy metal movement, but, but the new wave of British heavy metal movement uh, definitely, you know, led to the creation of thrash metal, but the roots also definitely on this band as well and of course the song bread fan um, so yeah uh, of course uh, uh, now I, I don't know if, if I really should put this guy maybe or before this one I was thinking like either switching it between this band before this guy but even though this this uh, war, uh, other guitar player really of course you know was definitely a huge inf uh, influence on a whole lot of metal musicians. Um, that's Richie Blackmore, of course, with here Rainbow. Um, 
Of course, there's um, the other, pretty much, his first band, Deep Purple. This guy really did help a lot with uh, shaping up such a sound for both speed and thrash. Of course, uh, on Deep Purple's end rock right here, it's of course the song Speed King, uh, which was a, for 1970, one of the fastest songs for 1970. Just real testosterone filled. And it definitely really led to the beginnings of of a whole new genre that would be very much created in the 1980s. Um, so yeah, of course with Rainbow we definitely also expand with a lot more heavier or kind of more melodic stuff that kind of would, you know, kind of also ship up a whole other genre which would be power metal but even also maybe to an old uh, other hybrid genre that would be called power thrash maybe which that would be a whole other discussion whole other discussion for this month. But yeah, uh, most of the song Kill the King, and even a song off of Rising, Black in the Black, just real fast, heavy tracks for that time period. Um, of course, here we go, finally, to, you know, Judas Priest. Definitely a band I really also definitely influenced the hell on the, you know, the genre as well. Of course, but this out to me definitely really had some pretty heavy riffing that would that you can definitely hear the roots of such a genre in there, especially the songs such as like Cider, uh, White Heat, Red Hot, or um, uh, Stained Class, uh, you know, or Heroes End. You know, there is definitely some of that. You know, the roots of thrash really also would definitely you know create with with this sound as well. Mostly with this album, in my opinion. Of course, most of their 70s stuff, from like Sad Wings of Destiny, you know, up to like Hellbent for Leather, all had some very heavy, fast riffing, which, which, it's like, while T Purple was definitely the one that kind of, you know, put the blueprints for speed metal, Judas Priest took it to the whole other level. And, but, talk, since I had brought up ACDC, you probably also can't help, uh, you know, talk about Motorhead, who really helped. And I should have put put this band probably first. It's one of the last, you know, ones to talk about. But there's probably one band that always seems to also get brought up a lot at times when talking about thrash. Um, here, Motorhead. Of course, the first down here. Uh, for 1977, this was probably next to ACDC, Let Them Be Rock and Fly, the most obnoxious, most loudest, most real fast albums for 1977. Just real raw and aggressive, which really, of course, shows a lot of the blueprint for thrash. A lot of it. Uh, same goes for, you know, even Overkill, of course. Um, Songs such as Overkill or whatever, and Limb from Limb, just that bomber. There, you can't you can't just help talk about you know the roots of thrash without bringing up one of the biggest influence on that genre, which being Motorhead. Even the singing for Thrashman, which is never you know it's mostly really shouted, barked out vocals, whatever, all started with Lemmy's. Uh, you know, sort of approach to it. Probably, the, again, one of the biggest influences on it. But, yet, that's not the first band, or the last band I want to talk, show here in the video to end off the, uh, the 70s, you know, Roots of Thrash. It's actually Black Sabbath. Surprisingly, Black Sabbath really, uh, just along with Deep Purple and Motorhead, definitely helped shape up such a genre. And it's, and the reason, and of course, you know, the riff to Symptom of the Universe off the Sabotage, such a, you know, just that riffing as well was also a huge influence on Thrash. But on this sound right here, Master of Reality, it probably has to do with the song Into the Void. Just that beat, that's that little middle fast part. 
even the even the, the sort of guitar tone of the sound, while the sound definitely was also, uh, you know, helped shaping up a whole other genre, which would be you know, known as doom metal, but with an album such as this, this really also helped kind of also come up with a, you know, real, that distorted sort of real, more of that sort of tone that you really would also kind of, you know, it's, you know, come to realize with thrash metal, that guitar tone, a real distorted sort of real type of, you know, tone. This album, this was 1971. This was probably the most heaviest album for 1971. But, again, also another album that I think that does belong in the, you know, when talk about the roots of thrash. That's pretty much it for the video. Kind of sloppy a bit and whatever, because um, it's a little unfocused in some way. But you know what? Fuck it. It's a fucking discussion video. Uh, if you felt like uh, that there was a band that was missing from here, of course, I almost thought, well, you know, putting in Van Halen. Because Eddie Van Halen definitely also kind of, you know, really helped influence a lot of, uh, you know, male musicians as well, even for the genre such as thrash, because they, they did experiment with some real fast songs as well. But it would definitely make it a bit too, you know, typical. So, so I kind of limited it a bit. Uh, so if there's a band that you uh, definitely felt like that I didn't, you know, bring in this video that was probably a little more ex obscure, but really did have, you know, a real heavy sort of sound that you probably would characterize as a thrash, definitely put that down in the comment section below. Uh, of course, the next video, we're going to be going into the 80s, mostly early 80s, though, and that one would be pretty cool. So, uh, so yeah, can't wait to uh, move on more with this month. So, till then, this is Henry Thrasher's Sam out, and I'll see you again.